Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <coughs> this is Rustam, and today I I am going to record another short video for uh, the course BS English three six four. The title of this course is Morphology and Syntax. Although I don't uh, don't teach this course uh, to six semester students, uh, I teach them uh, psycholinguistics. But I just wa uh, decided that I should also record a, a um, short video. Because other students, uh, students from other colleges are also uh, joining my um, YouTube uh, channel, Rustum's Way of Learning English. So uh, I thought that uh, this video sh uh, should also be recorded. Now, uh, morphology and syntax, they both are uh, part of grammar. Let, let me show you the slide. Here, uh, uh, I often say that uh, uh, language consists of three basic uh, com components sound and grammar and meaning so grammar is the central part which connects sounds with meaning so basic unit of uh, 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 sound is phoneme and basic unit of grammar is morpheme so today I will uh, cover only morphology and uh, morphology and syntax they are sub branches of grammar so this part th this part that is grammar it consists of words and sentences so word can be uh, forms of uh, morphs of words or forms of words or parts of words are known as morphology so uh, let me take you to another uh, uh, let me give you an example like here's a word carelessness like in every uh, language of the world there are eight parts of speech or there are eight classes of words so this is a noun carelessness so this word can be further broken down into care as you can see here care then less and then ness so there are three parts each part is known as uh, morpheme 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 so morph what is morpheme uh, a minimal unit of grammar are, uh, which can give us meaning as well as grammatical function here is another example uh, see here is a word undressed so this word can be broken down uh, or can be simplified into three parts as you can see here undressed and ed undressed so we can't further divide these parts undressed ed so this is a morpheme a morpheme or morpheme so this morpheme is known as free morpheme as you can see here and these two are uh, bound morpheme so later on i will explain what is a free morpheme or what is a bound morpheme here is an, another example tourists tourists is a, a, a plural name uh, but we can see uh, you can see that it can be broken down into three parts toa ist i i s t and s so each part uh, is known as a morpheme so morphology deals with uh, parts of words or uh, forms of words forms forms of words these forms are known as morpheme okay now let me uh, t uh, give you another example reopened so in this word we have re open and ed re opened so there are three morphemes in this word and now here is the definition of a morpheme a minimal unit of meaning or grammatical function so grammatical function mean that uh, like uh, uh, parts of speech like whether a uh, wo word is uh, uh, you know noun uh, it's uh, you know adjective adverb etc so one minimal unit of meaning is re it means again one minimal unit of meaning is open which is a lexical item and uh, it's a verb and uh, last uh, grammatical meaning or grammatical function is ed which indicates past tense now here is a very important uh, here is an, another interesting sentence from uh, english language please have a look at this sentence girls the girls wildness shocked the teachers now it's a sentence that is syntax syntax but this syntax uh, contains words 
as we can see here there are six words so each word can be further broken down into smaller pieces or smaller parts like the the cannot be further simplified but girls as you can see here girls this can be uh, broken down into two pieces this one and this one two morphemes now wildness wildness can be broken down into wild and ness it means there are two morphemes here one word two morpheme okay now shocked shocked is a word a, a, a word and a verb but this word or verb can be broken down into two pieces one and two each piece is known as a morpheme this way let's come to the last word teachers so teachers can be broken down into teach er and s so teach er and s teachers so there are three morphemes there are three morphemes now uh, morphemes can be divided into free and bound free morphemes are those morphemes which uh, stand on their own and bound morphemes as we can see here they are morphemes which give their meaning when they are attached to some free morpheme like uh, on their own they don't express lexical meaning but when they are attached with some free morpheme like this then they start uh, giving us grammatical meaning known as uh, grammatical functions like when ness is added to some uh, adjective it gives us noun and when ed is attached to some verb it gives us past tense when er is attached to a noun it gives us a noun which performs an operator that is actor teacher the person who teaches when s is attached to a noun like uh, we have this noun teacher so when s is attached to it, it gives us plural uh, indication that there are many teachers so each morpheme has a meaning uh, the free morpheme morphemes uh, express uh, lexical meaning or grammatical meaning these are free morphemes as we can see here and uh, the bound morpheme express uh, grammatical meaning or grammatical functions now free morphemes uh, are further of two types like uh, open uh, closed class words like functional uh, functional morpheme so functional grammatical and structural these words there are four uh, there are six uh, uh, words which are known as structural words in english are like uh, prepositions uh, pronouns conjunctions uh, interjunctions uh, helping verbs and uh, uh, articles these are known as uh, functional or grammatical or structural words so here is a um, free morpheme uh, but the type of free morpheme is functional a girl it's a there are four uh, open class words uh, which are nouns adverb main verb and adjective so if a word or uh, if a morpheme belongs to this category it is known as lexical or content uh, morpheme lexical morpheme so here is a bound morpheme uh, they are further uh, are two types but i will touch upon them later on right now i'm talking about free morphemes so here are uh, let me point out free morphemes free morpheme free morpheme free free and free now if a morpheme is free it is either functional or lexical here is a functional morpheme here is a, le a lexical morpheme okay now here is wild uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's an adjective so it's a lexical morpheme shock is a main verb so lexical morpheme teach is a main verb so it's a lexical morpheme okay now coming to bound morphemes bound morphemes are also of two types one is known as derivational morpheme as we can see here and one is known as inflectional morpheme uh, inflectional morphemes are a closed class item they are eight in english language eight there are eight inflections in english language and bound morphemes are uh, unlimited uh, they there is no limit to them and uh, usually inflection morphemes uh, all inflection morphemes act as uh, suffixes suffix they come at the end of the words but bound morphemes can be 
uh, you know they can be free, uh, prefixes or uh, they can be uh, suffixes uh, let's go to the next uh, slide okay here you can see morpheme so there are morphemes are divided into free morphemes and bound morphemes now free morphemes are further divided into two types lexical morphemes and functional morphemes okay lexical morphemes are also known as open class words as we can see here open class morpheme or uh, we, we can also say them content words content words the words which carry burden of information nouns adjectives verbs verbs mean main verbs and adverbs so functional morpheme are further divided into four types these are closed class words pronouns preposition interjections and conjunctions but in english language we also have articles there are three articles in english language so they are also uh, functional morphemes are free morphemes but functional morpheme and uh, another category is uh, uh, helping verbs or auxiliaries so auxiliaries are helping verbs are also included in in this group so let's uh, go back to the uh, he uh, head of the uh, uh, this uh, tree diagram morpheme uh, is the minimal grammatical unit as you can say a word a word can be broken down into morphemes so word is a sub branch of uh, grammar so the simplest form of a word is known as morpheme so morphemes are of two types free morphemes and bound morpheme free morphemes lexical functional okay now come to uh, bound morpheme bound morphemes are again of two types derivational and inflectional first let me cover inflectional morphemes so these are closed uh, it's a closed category why we say closed category because uh, they are fixed there there are only eight morphemes like uh, plural s books and boxes so es and s they are bound morpheme and uh, they although they are bound morpheme but they are inflections inflections urdu mein hum inko tatma bhi kehte hain jaise hum urdu mein kehte hain jata hai usne kitab padhi jo aakhir mein ye aati hai उन्होंने खतूत लिखे लिखे के आखिर में जो बड़ी जी आती है या हम कहते हैं उसने ख़त लिखा अलिफ जो आता है इन्हें कहते हैं इन्फ्लैक्शन दे आर बाउंड मॉरफीम्स ओके नाउ ओनरशिप व्हेन वी वांट टू शो ओनरशिप सो वी यूज़ एन अपोस्ट्रॉफी एंड एस लाइक अलीज बुक सो हियर अली इज़ आ फ्री मॉरफीम बुक इज़ आ फ्री मॉरफीम बट अपोस्ट्रॉफी एंड एस दिस इज़ आ बाउंड मॉरफीम adjective there are two uh, there are two morphemes which show adjectives like er and est so this the, the, the er is used for comparative degrees and this is with uh, superlative degrees okay then we have verbs for verbs there are four uh, uh, morpheme for verbs there are four morphemes uh, let me drag it up okay okay uh here uh, as we can see here verb ing like calling bringing s co like calls uh, writes uh, you know verb ed like uh, regular verbs uh, called he called me and uh, en like broken so the word broken uh, can be you know we can break it into two morphemes like break or broke and en like we say uh, uh, bite and bitten bite and bitten so en is a morpheme and uh, it is inflectional and bound morpheme now as far uh, all uh, inflections are suffixes they come at the end of the words but as far as derivational morphemes are concerned they can be prefixes and suffixes like uh, i o n comes with nouns it is a suffix m e n t comes with noun it is a suffix is and i c comes uh, with the nouns and it is a suffix but they can come uh, before uh, you know uh, before uh, uh, verbs uh, words so they never change the categ uh, grammatical category like if uh, let's say we use the word small small is an adjective and uh, 
Sambalar is also an adjective and uh, Sambalest is also an adjective. So they don't change the uh, uh, grammatical category or parts of speech status, but they can change. They may change like uh, we say black, uh, black. Now if we say blackish, blackish, so both are adjectives. So here they have not changed, but they can change like let me say let me say uh, teach uh, let's say let's say there's a word uh, uh, there's there can be many example in which the uh, parts of speech is change like uh, mm, slow slow is a uh, uh, slow is a slow is an adjective okay slow is an adjective but when we add ly okay derivation of morpheme it becomes slowly so here it's a derivational morpheme. Ly is a derivational morpheme because slow was an uh, adjective. Now slowly is an adverb. Okay. So uh, today we talked about uh, morphemes. And uh, here uh, another important example. When uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a word, there are, let's say, uh, there are two bound morphemes. And uh, here is a free morpheme. So free morpheme acts as a stem. And to this stem, let's say this is a stem, so uh, to this stem we attach suffixes and prefixes. Okay, un is here and uh, ed is here and this is a stem, that is dress, undressed. So the free morpheme uh, to which are added uh, bound morphemes is known as a stem. And this stem uh, acts as a free, uh, free morpheme and uh, the suffixes and prefixes are known as, uh, uh, you know, uh, bound morpheme. Okay, so I think uh, this suffices. Uh, this is su uh, sufficient for today's uh, lecture. So we have got an idea about uh, morphemes. So uh, there is a complete three credit hour course in which uh, uh, morphology and syntax both have to be covered so i in this uh, short video i try to uh, touch upon morphemes because uh, it's very important area of uh, language study language study means that uh, uh, studying sounds and studying uh, morphemes and uh, sentences and then studying meaning so when we talk about uh, uh, we talk about sounds, then there, there are many things like uh, consonant sounds, uh, vowel sounds, then the manner of articulation, their voicing, so uh, like uh, consonant clusters, then there, uh, it's, it's a great, uh, you know, uh, a co complete course, phonetics and phonology. In uh, Aptabar University of Science and Technology, this course is taught in fourth semester, and uh, this course, Morphology and sy Syntax, this is taught in third year and sixth semester and uh, it's, a f it's, it's four subjects, fourth subjects. So our code is 364, uh, 364. So BS English 364. So uh, when uh, again uh, semantics can also be taught when students move into seventh semester. So uh, thank you very much for watching, uh, watching this short video. Uh, I usually uh, uh, record my uh, lecture uh, without any you know kind of uh, formal preparation so I just uh, take few pictures with smartphone and then I start recording myself maybe sometime I uh, uh, there are few mistakes when I record so you are requested to uh, ignore them so please uh, uh, keep watching my uh, YouTube channel that is Rustam's way of learning English. Also share these videos with other students because uh, we are now quarantined uh, at home and I, I want my students to be uh, benefiting from them. And as these lectures are free for everyone so uh, you can uh, share these videos in your Facebook groups, Twitter or um, uh, your WhatsApp groups so that all can benefit. Thank you very much.